In Godot 4, there's a couple new multiplayer nodes that make certain aspects of networking way easier. I have a little project set up here with the main scene. It just contains a mesh instance for the floor, a directional light, and a menu. The menu has a host and join button, as well as a line edit that takes a port number. In the script, there's a function that handles setting up the server, and another for setting up the client, as well as a function that instantiates a player character scene, sets its name to the unique PRD of the player it's being added for, and then adds it to the main scene. The player character scene has a mesh instance as its root node, and just a child camera 3D. The script attaches a little bit of code that handles the inputs needed for a first person controller. For now, we'll just use this overworld camera instead of the first person cameras on the character nodes. So the first node we'll look at is the multiplayer spawner. When a node from the auto spawn list is added to the spawn path on the multiplayer authority, by default that's the server, the multiplayer spawner will add an instance of that node to the spawn path on every other peer. Also when a peer connects, the multiplayer spawner will add all the existing instances on the server to that new peer's spawn path. The spawn limit is how many of each of these items in the auto spawn list are allowed to be added. Zero means there is no limit. The spawn path will be the main root node, and the only item in the auto spawn list will be the player character scene. And it's as simple as that. When we run the game, a player character scene will be automatically added for each player on the server side and the client side. It looks like there's just a single player character on the client because they are both spawning in the exact same position. I haven't set the multiplayer authority in the add player character function because that will only be set for the client's remote player character instantiated on the server. The only property that is duplicated over onto other peers from the server is the name property. Next up is the multiplayer synchronizer. The multiplayer synchronizer is used to synchronize properties across the network. The properties on each peer will continuously be set to the values of a scene with the synchronizer that is the multiplayer authority. This will be the locally controlled player character on each peer. I'll first show you an implementation that doesn't quite work, but I'm pretty sure it is the way that the synchronizer is intended to be used and will work in future releases. Maybe I'm just being dummy and missing something? And if that's the case, I'll add an info card to a video with the correct information. After I show you this way, I'll show you how I managed to get it working. So I'll start by adding a multiplayer synchronizer to the player character scene. This will keep track of and synchronize selected properties on the node at the root path and its children. To select which properties to synchronize, you go to the replication tab at the bottom here and click add property to sync. Then you choose a node and all its built-in properties will be displayed. If you want your own custom properties to show up here, you just need to export them. For now, I'll just add the position property. There are two checkboxes here. Spawn means the property will be synced when the character is first added to the scene, and sync means the property will be continuously synced at a regular interval, which is set here. I won't get into visibility too much in this video, but essentially it just determines which peers will receive the updated property values. Public visibility means all the peers receive them. Next, we need to set the multiplayer authority of the synchronizer. Remember how I said the name property is duplicated over to the clients? Since we set the unique ID of the player controlling each character, we can convert that back to an integer and set it to the multiplayer authority of each character's multiplayer synchronizer. I'll then make the character's camera the current camera and only run the input code if the character's synchronizer is the multiplayer authority. Now when we move the server's player character, the position of its remote counterpart on the client is updated. But when we move the client's character, well, that's the part that doesn't quite work. The only way I've been able to get the synchronization to work from the client to the server is if the root path of the synchronizer is not set to the root node of the scene and instead set to a child. The simplest way to do this is to just set the root path of the synchronizer to the synchronizer itself, and then add a script with properties that are updated by the authority. Those properties are then synchronized across the network and update properties on the root node if they're not on the multiplayer authority. I feel like that explanation kind of sucks, so I'll go through it again with another property that synchronizes the character's rotation on the y-axis. In the input function on the root node script, the synchronizer's y rotation property will be set to the root node's rotation.y. A setter on the synchronizer script will then set this value to the property since it's the multiplayer authority. This value will then be synchronized and set on the non-multiplayer authorities. On each remote counterpart, his multiplayer authority will return false in the setter and the value will be set to the root node's rotation.y. Hopefully this video was helpful. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.